Hi, assalamu alaikum and a very good morning. So now we are still in chapter 4, chemical bonding. And now we are in the subtopic of 4.1, the Lewis structure, part 3b. So in this video, we're going to look into the determination for the formal charge. And hence, we're going to determine the most plausible Lewis structure. In which, this is going to be covered in part 3a and 3b. In which, we're going to use the formal charge in order to determine the possible Lewis structure. So this is interrelated with the previous video. Meanwhile, for the learning outcome of G, we're going to look about that in part 4, and the learning outcome of H, we're going to cover that in part 5. So without any further ado, let us conclude part 3b first. So formal charge, Fc here, is used to determine the most stable or the most possible Lewis structure. So the most possible or the most stable Lewis structure happens when the atoms have the smallest formal charges and the most electronegative atom will have the negative formal charge as well as the most electropositive atom will have a positive formal charge. And it is important to note that the sum of the formal charge of the atom must equal to zero for a molecule that is neutral. Meanwhile, for the polyatomic ion, it needs to refer to the same ionic charges that they carry. For example, an O3 minus. So when it has a negative charge here, the sum of the formal charge here needs to also be equal to minus 1. It needs to be consistent. If the molecule is neutral, for example, CH4, so it carries a charge of 0, so the sum of the formal charge need to be also equal to zero so it needs to be consistent and the formal charge of each atom can be calculated by using the valence electron of the atom minus lone pair electrons minus the bonding pair to understand more about the formal charge let us look into the example that we have did just now so this is the lewis structure that we have drawn and now we need to calculate the formal charge, where the formal charge of an atom equal to valence electron minus the lone pair electrons and the binding pairs. So now, let us calculate the formal charge of the hydrogen. So formal charge of the hydrogen is equal to the valence electron of the hydrogen, which is 1. Okay, And then we need to minus the lone pair electrons and the hydrogen. So since it does not have any lone pairs, so we just put it as zero. And then the bonding pair, the hydrogen here will have one. So minus one. So the charge that they're going to carry is zero. So the hydrogen here will have zero. So the charge, the formal charge of zero here will be the same for all the terminal atom because it has no lone pairs and then it has only one bonding pair. So you can say that here, 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 and here will have the same formal charge, which is zero. Okay? And then for the carbon, you can calculate it by finding the valence electron. So you know that the carbon will have a valence electron of four. And then for the lone pair electrons, the carbon doesn't have any. So we just put it zero but it has one, two, three, four bonding pairs. So we're going to minus it with four. So four minus four is going to be zero here. So the formal charge of carbon is going to be zero. And then the summation of formal charge, which is zero plus zero plus zero plus zero plus zero, will equal to zero. And you know that this is stable structure because the summation of formal charge is zero and the charge of each the, the, the formal charge of each atom is zero. Okay? And since this is a neutral molecule, it has a charge of zero, and then once we calculate the formal charge, we also get zero. So you know that it is correct. Now we're going to do that for ammonia, which is NH3. So similarly, you can find the formal charge for the hydrogen. So the hydrogen here, 1, 2, and 3, is the same. Okay, so you can calculate it just one time, formal charge of hydrogen. 
So the valence electron of the hydrogen is one. And then the lone pair surrounding the hydrogen, there is no, there is none. So we can put it zero. But the hydrogen here has one lone, has one bonding pair. So minus one. So it's gonna be zero here. So zero. Here is also zero, and then here is also zero because it is identical. Sama je. Okay, and now we're going to calculate the formal charge for the nitrogen, which is at the center. So the valence electron for the nitrogen is going to be five, and then lone pair electrons. So for the lone pair, pair electrons, you need to calculate it one by one, which is one and two electrons. Okay. This is called as lone pair, but once we are talking about lone pair electrons, you need to call it, you need to calculate it one by one, which is one here and then one here. So it's going to be minus two. Okay, and then they're going to have one, two, three bonding pairs. So it's going to be minus 3. So 5 minus 2 minus 3 is going to become 0. So the charge at nitrogen is going to be 0 here. Okay? And if we were to find if we were to find the summation of formal charge, so 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0, we're going to get 0 as well. Okay? And the charge of the molecule here is also 0. So we know that it is consistent. And the structure here is stable because we have zero all the time. Now we're going to look into the water molecule here. So similarly, once we have drawn the Lewis structure, we need to calculate the formal charge. So we're going to calculate the formal charge of the hydrogen first. So this hydrogen and this hydrogen is identical. So you can only, you can just calculate one and then you know the answer for the other one. Okay, so hydrogen here will have one valence electron minus zero lone pair surrounding it, and then it has one bonding pair, so minus one. So we're gonna get one minus one equal to zero. So zero here and zero here. And then for the formal charge of oxygen, the valence electron of oxygen is six minus lone pair electron. So one, two, three, and four. So minus four. And then we have one and two bonding pairs. So minus two. So the formal charge of oxygen that we're gonna get is zero here. Okay. And as what you can see, the summation of formal charge gonna be zero. Because zero plus zero plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 is going to be 0. And the molecule of water is neutral. So you know that it is consistent. Okay, And you also know that this is the correct and the most stable Lewis structure because it has 0 all the time, which is the lowest charges that they can have. Alright, so now let us count the formal charge for the next atom that we have drawn. Okay, As what you can see here, we have two possible Lewis structure, and this is where the formal charge is important because we need to determine whether structure number one or structure number two is the most stable one. And this is where the formal charge will play its role. So let us count the formal charge of the oxygen A here. Okay, so oxygen A here will have. Six valence electron because oxygen, right? And then it's gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six lone pair electron minus one bonding pair. So it's gonna have the charge of minus one. So oxygen A here will have the charge of minus one. The formal charge of carbon. So carbon has four valence electron, and then it's gonna have one, two, three, four. Uh, sorry, it has no lone pair, so zero. And then the bonding pair is going to be one, two, three, four. So the charge of carbon here is zero. Okay, and then the oxygen here, which is oxygen B. 
So the, the formal charge of oxygen B is going to be the valence electron of oxygen going to be 6 minus lone pair electron 1 and 2 minus 1, 2, 3. So the charge is going to be plus 1. So here is going to be plus 1. So the summation of formal charge is going to be negative 1 plus 0 plus 1. So it's going to be 0 as well. Okay, but the charge of each atom is different. So now let us look into the formal charge of the second molecule. So oxygen here and the oxygen here is the same because they are identical, right? So oxygen A, so we can calculate it one time only. So oxygen will have six valence electron minus lone pair electron one, two, three, and four minus 4, and then minus 2 bonding pairs. So we're going to get 0 here. So we're going to head, we're going to get 0 here, and then 0 here. And then the formal charge of carbon is equal to 4 minus 1, 2, 3, 4. And it doesn't have any lone pair electron. So minus 0, minus 4. So the formal charge of carbon that we're going to get is 0. Okay, so 0, 0, and 0. And the summation of formal charge here is still 0, which is consistent to the charge of the molecule, which is 0 here. Okay, but the difference between number 1 and number 2 is the charge of each atom. So for oxygen here is 0, carbon 0, oxygen 0. But in, for the case number 1, you're going to have negative 1, 0, and plus 1. So which of the molecule 1 and 2 is the most possible? Number 1 or number 2? The answer is number 2 is the most possible and the most stable one because the formal charge here is the lowest, which is 0, 0, and 0. Okay? And now you're going to do that for NO2 plus as well. So we need to determine number 1 or number 2 is the most plausible. So we have to calculate the formal charge. So oxygen A and oxygen A because they are identical. So 6 minus 1, 2, 3, 4 on pair electron minus 1, 2. So it's going to become 0 here. For the nitrogen, it's going to become 5 minus 1, 2, 3, 4, because it does not have any lone pairs, so minus 0, minus 4. So the charge of nitrogen here is going to be plus 1, and the charge of oxygen here is going to be 0 and 0 here. Meanwhile, for the case number 2, the oxygen here will be labeled as oxygen A, here going to be labeled as oxygen B, so formal charge of oxygen A is going to be 6 minus, because 6 valence electron of oxygen, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so minus 6, minus 1 bonding pair. So the charge of oxygen A is going to be minus 1. Meanwhile, the formal charge of nitrogen is going to be 5 minus, because it doesn't have any lone pair, so minus 0. Minus 1, 2, 3, 4. So minus 4 here. So it's going to be plus 1. And then for the oxygen B here, it's going to be 6 minus 1 and 2, 2 lone pair electron, and then 1, 2, 3 bonding pairs here. So it's going to be plus 1 here. Okay, so you're going to have a charge of negative 1 positive 1, and then positive 1 here. And if we were to find the summation of formal charge for molecule number 1, we're going to get plus 1, because 0 plus 1 plus 0, we're going to get plus 1, which is consistent to plus 1 here. Okay? And if we were to find the summation of formal charge in molecule number 2, we're going to get negative 1 plus 1 plus 1, so we're going to get plus 1 as well, which is consistent to the structure, the charge of the polyatomic ion here. 
However, which one of the molecule, number one or number two, is the most stable one? Yes. So the most stable one is going to be the number one because the charge here is zero and then zero. So it has uh, the lowest formal charge overall because zero, zero, and plus one. Meanwhile here, negative one, plus one, and plus one. So it does not have the smallest charges between the atoms. And because of that reason, the molecule number one is the most stable one. So we will draw it to be number one here instead of drawing number two. Okay? So I think that's all for today's video. See you again some other time. Bye!